Hi to everyone who's joining. I can see that we have our speaker for the day also joining. So just give us a couple of minutes to connect her. Hi, Minakshi. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you doing? Great, great. Great. So, um, I just wanted to check that we're live on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Hi, Pritika. Hi, Dimple. Am I audible on Facebook? Okay. Hi, Pratika. Great. So, um, maybe we can. Great. So, good to know that the audio is clear. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dimple. Maybe we can just wait for a couple of minutes until people join in. Yeah. Um, and then we can begin. I'd like to invite everyone and thank them for joining the Samvedna, um, the online awareness series that we've been conducting over the past few months uh, to really talk about various issues um, concerning mental health, concerning well being. Um, these are, it's, we've been interacting with. Um, mental health experts um, and other experts to really try and understand how to overcome some of the challenges that we're facing during these very unusual times. And today um, we have with us Minakshi Chopra. She's a clinical psychologist who's trained uh, from IPHAS and has extensive experience working with adults. Um, she's a consultant psychologist at Samvedna and from and she's been working with adults helping them through various kind of problems related to anxiety um, mood related issues and other psychological concerns um, that people have been experiencing since um, the covid pandemic um, she has a lot of experience and um, it's great to have you for this discussion today um, and we're going to be discussing something which I think is, is very important right now as more and more people are, um, as we're seeing the, you know, the numbers of COVID increasing. Um, how do we stay motivated during quarantine? So thanks, Minakshi, for being here and um, agreeing to talk about some of these very challenging uh, things. So we've been hearing a lot about, you know, different terms, quarantine, 
isolation, social distancing. Can you help us understand what these different terms mean? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me for this uh, talk and uh, it's a great opportunity to learn about what exactly is quarantine and you know what are the ways in which we can manage ourselves during this tough time. Um, so uh, we have been listening the word listening to the word quarantine so much that you know we are uh, using it you know in everyday vocabulary. And also people are, uh, people have started to uh, interchangeably use the words quarantine and uh, isolation. Right. So um, there is a, there is a lot of difference between these two terms. Um, when we talk about quarantine, it is it means that a person may or may not be uh, may not have been in contact with someone who was infected. Mm-hmm. So this person has. A probability of getting infected but we do not know so to you know know about that probability whether this person would fall sick or not he's supposed to stay in quarantine or separated from other people for a period of 14 days so that if symptoms develop then we can do something about it if symptoms don't develop then it's perfectly fine mm. since this illness is uh, unknown to us we don't know about this virus so keeping people who have this infection away from others is very important right now. Right. Even if there is just a, uh, you know, we just have, we just suspect whether mm. they have this infection or not. Keeping them away is for the you know, safety of others around them. Isolation is different. Isolation would be when a person is already infected and there is a higher, higher chance of this person infecting others. Because the viral load is higher in this person. So keeping this person away from others is very, very important so that we can spread the, uh, you know, uh, this infection from going to others. Right. So that is why we are uh, using these terms differently. Quarantine is for people who may be sick, but mm-hmm. isolation is for people who are sick. And then there is the word social distancing that we are using. Social distancing would be a very general term. So Mm. it is not related to whether you are uh, sick or not. This is something, this is a protocol which needs to be followed by everyone. So even in your family, you need to follow social distancing. Even if you are going out, you need to follow social distancing. It means you need to keep a certain amount of distance between you and another person so that it keeps you safe from getting this illness. So these are the three kinds of separation that we talk about. Quarantine, isolation and social distancing. Yeah. So, you know, that's great to have more clarity on what these different terms mean. Um, so social isolation is about um, the pr- protocol that we should all be following, really. Um, and isolation is for people who have signs of early symptoms um, mm-hmm. and quarantine is, is really for people who um, are maintaining this distancing even though they may not show symptoms right now mm-hmm. and yeah. I guess that's and I guess that that makes it incredibly challenging um, because mm-hmm. these people are not showing any kind of symptoms yet they were having to follow certain restrictions can you mm-hmm. tell us what are some of the challenges that people are experiencing yeah see uh, a person goes into quarantine with a, with an uncertainty that they may or may not fall sick they might have been uh, exposed to this virus but mm-hmm. we don't know so it's this uncertainty which is frustrating we are staying away from our loved ones our family but we don't even know whether we have this illness or not. So that gets to people that, you know, what is going to happen? Would I be sick? Would I not be sick? Would I, would I infect others? You know, there is this fear in people's minds, whether, you know, se hoga ke nahi hoga. and that, that really, you know, eats up their everything. So yeah, one of those issues is there. Um, second would be, uh, 
Mm. Second would be frustration, boredom, because a person has not many things to do when they are alone. And if we talk about quarantine, the person has to strictly follow it and has to strictly stay away from everyone. So you have to be in a separate room. You cannot come in contact with others. So when a person is lonely, they feel frustrated. They feel bored. What should I do now? Because right. my daily routine has been hampered. Mm. What, what am I going to do? And since this period is for two weeks, it gets really difficult for people in the you know last few days. Initially, it is okay, but in the last few days, it gets a little bit difficult to manage. Right. Um, another problem that mm. yeah. Tell us, tell us what are some of the, um, so we've just got a message saying that, that quarantine is making a lot of us lazy and procrastinate. Um, how do we stay mentally active and physically um, healthy during the lockdown? Can mm -hmm. you tell us how we can motivate, how people can motivate themselves to remain, um, you know, in quarantine? As you mentioned, this two week period is fairly long and initially it's, you know, it may be simple, but increasingly it becomes more and more challenging. What, what can people do? Mm -hmm. uh, see, uh, we have to follow a few practical strategies to help us get through this time. So being practical means having a routine, although it's, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. Mm -hmm. it, your routine gets drastically upset during this time. You're sleeping late, you're waking up late, you're not eating on time, you're don't, not doing your, you know, whatever activities you do on time. So one of the things that needs to be understood here is that one needs to have a routine. They need to fix time to do certain activities, be it eating, be it sleeping, be it waking up, be it exercising, it could be anything. So these are the things which need to be there, which need to be a part of your day. But um, if we talk about staying active, um, there would be times when a person would feel lazy, a person would feel low. But right. what can be done about that is to plan your day in advance. Mm -hmm. For example, you can make a list of things that you can do. That would mean, you know, could be anything, something like uh, eating a meal, eating a meal on time or, you know, washing your own clothes or maybe doing some kind of a leisurely activity or some pleasurable activity that mm -hmm. would be some kind of happiness. So these are the things that need to be incorporated during your day. And it is okay if you're not able to go through your whole list. Even if you're able to do one or two tasks out of that, that is again progress. So planning your day in advance is important. Maintaining a routine is important. And um, you also need to have an accountability buddy. So okay. this is a term which I also recently came across to ask someone to keep a check on you. Okay, so you know, okay. And an accountability buddy. Yes. So, yes. so who, who would this accountability buddy be? Uh, it could be anyone. It could be anyone from your family, anyone from your friend circle or social circle, anyone whom you can trust. So, okay. so since we are not talking to anyone face to face, we can always talk to them through social media, direct social media or through phone calls or video calls. But an accountability buddy is the person who is going to keep a check on how you're doing, what you're doing, whether you are feeling good or not, if you are motivated enough, if you are losing hope to reassure you, to provide you all kinds of help remotely that can be provided. So an accountability buddy is very important apart from having a routine and apart from, you know, a uh, setting a setting a few tasks aside so these are a few of the things that one can look into and one can include in their routine if they feel that they have started to procrastinate or they have started becoming lazy mm. so i think that's those are really important things which you've highlighted um 
maintaining a routine can be quite difficult for people whilst they're um, under quarantine. But um, that's a great suggestion that you've given that it's important to see how you can plan your day. Um, and, and if you have an accountability buddy, that means, uh, you know, that's someone you can really discuss the challenges that you're with. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's a, someone that keeps a check on you. Um, yes. And um, what are the other kind of things that, uh, you know, this accountability buddy should be keeping a check on? I mean, we've been hearing, um, you know, a lot of people saying uh, who are under quarantine and that you've been working with, mm -hmm. it, that they're experiencing mm -hmm. a lot of increased psychological distress. Can you share some yes. thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. um, see, uh, of all the past researches that have been done for people who have been quarantined, um, the longer the quarantine period is, the higher the likelihood of them for developing psychological issues and, you know, problems like depression, anxiety, and even PTSD. So mm. a, a accountability buddy would be helpful in identifying these markers. So there are three different kinds of uh, indicators that are there. Um, an accountability buddy would help in identifying if this quarantine person has any kind of negative thoughts. Like, right. I'm not feeling happy. I'm feeling, you know, very hopeless. Whether this would improve or not. I don't know. So these are the things that an accountability buddy could help you with. To just provide you with some kind of a reassurance and help you, you know, tackle these thoughts. Because this is very common to uh, you know, experience when a person is under quarantine. Mm -hmm. So one of the uh, markers would be what kind of thoughts that person is uh, expressing. Second would be uh, whether this person is eating properly, whether this person is sleeping properly or not, or whether this person is facing any kind of difficulty in maintaining a routine. Mm. See, mm. we always maintain some kind of a routine. But if a person is facing too much difficulty, there is a significant difficulty in maintaining a routine. There's a significant change in a person's appetite or their eating habits. Or the person is crying a lot. Right. Or you can feel that you can feel that the person is, uh, the voice is shaky. Because mm. these are the things that one can also identify remotely. Mm. These can, are the emotional signs which can be looked into and some kind of help can be taken about that. Okay, so emotional and uh, thought process. Emotional markers and what kind of thoughts they are expressing. These are very important for a person to help them deal with these issues. So, so I mean... Really, when you identify, if you're in quarantine, identify someone who can be your mm -hmm. accountability buddy um, mm -hmm. and, and share your thoughts with them. Uh, I mm -hmm. talk to them about the kind of concerns that you have, um, mm -hmm. the emotions that you're going through. And mm -hmm. um, you, you're suggesting that the accountability buddy keeps a watch mm -hmm. on you. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great partnership in that way, which we can maintain long distance mm -hmm. as well to watch yes. out for each other's mental health and well-being. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, if, if you, someone experiences um, things that they're unable to deal with, that's a time mm -hmm. at which, do you think they should be reaching out for help or should it be, well, what, what are the steps? How do you think someone, what, what should someone do in, those situ in that situation? Okay. Uh, see, uh, since quarantine is it, in itself a very difficult situation, a person is bound to feel low, anxious, upset, and you know all these kinds of uh, emotional disturbances and uh, behavioral disturbances might be there. But we need to see whether this is becoming too frequent or whether this is affecting their functioning, whether they are not even doing their daily activities like taking a bath or you know, just talking. If, if this person is looking more and more withdrawn and not even talking about all these things, that is a red flag. Right, right. And this accountability buddy might not be able to help in such a situation. Mm -hmm. 
in such a case professional advice is always recommended they can also always go to a counselor or a clinical psychologist or maybe a psychiatrist to help them deal with these situations so hmm and and um, right right now though with um, you know if they're in quarantine w- would you suggest they reach out for tele counseling services is um... definitely definitely because most of the people are most of the uh, mental health professionals are working remotely these days and uh, again that is quite a good way of communicating and of taking help in these circumstances so help is always there but one just needs to know where to go so tele counseling and even tele medicine is available a doctor can just, you know evaluate online check for what are the signs and symptoms you know it can do a detailed evaluation and then you know give your prescription along with that you can also go for therapy or counseling for your distressing thoughts and uh, you know your emotional disturbances so these are the things that can be considered if even if a person is in quarantine right and um this there's a, a lot of people feel that it's um this there may be something wrong with them there's a lot of stigma about reaching out to a, a professional a mental health professional for help mm-hmm. and support though so mm-hmm. do you think that um you know under these circumstances if someone avails um you know reaches out to a counselor and avails of some support do you think that this is something that would be required for very long or is this just some interim support that can help an individual how how long does um you know psychological support how much is needed really um see that would vary from person to person if a person is experiencing something that is situational mm. that is happening just now but previously they were doing fine so they would just need some kind of a supportive counseling or somebody to just help them analyze the situation restructure their thought process and you know create acceptance in you know themselves that this is okay and i i am going to be fine mm. but if a person is already experiencing uh, they already had some kind of mental illness or psychological issues like depression anxiety ocd even psychosis so they need to understand that in such a situation keeping in touch with their mental health providers is even more important more so, so have have you sorry? seen a, 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 an an increased impact on people with psychiatric conditions during covid yes yes, yes. so a lot of people are, are developing this fear of uh, contracting this illness so mm-hmm. there is anticipatory anxiety a lot of people have generalized anxiety some are becoming uh, uh, you know obsessive about these thoughts that what is going to happen all the people who already have obsessive thoughts they are becoming even worse so these things are increasing because of the prevalent conditions and taking help in such a situation is very important because if a person is already ill and they're not taking help then this condition is just going to get worse mm-hmm. right now if they reach out to us and take some kind of help then the situation can be improved it might take time but again it can be improved in some way right right mm-hmm. um i'd i'd just like to pause and uh, you know ask our listeners to definitely share any questions that they have um just type them into the the chat so that you can um we can share this with minakshi and um you know get her expert inputs on how to deal with quarantine um in a better way uh so there's there's one question um that we have uh which is how can i maintain my emotional wellness uh through this time period mm-hmm. okay so uh emotions go haywire when a person is in quarantine they get confused they get scared they get worried they get anxious they get angry so all the negative emotions have a very very strong impact on a person and since uh, 
we are talking about immunity and immune system these days so if we talk about that these emotions have an adverse effect on one's immune system so keeping your immune system is very important and uh, keeping a check on these emotions is again very important mm. so we need to understand that the more we think about the future the worse we are going to feel kya <clears> hoga <throat> what if this happens what if that happens what if i fall sick what if my family member falls sick what if i lose my job what mm. what if x y z happens to so see these are the things that go in go on into a mind into a person's mind once they are in quarantine so it is very important for them to stay in the moment mm. think about what is happening right now how can i go through this day how can i go through today mm. what can i do today to make my day better to make myself feel better so again i have always recommended re- exercises relaxation exercises mm. deep breathing so bringing yourself to the moment is important mm. you can do uh, you know let's say 5 minute of deep breathing Just close mm. your eyes breathe deeply you no know, try to take these thoughts out of your mind mm. and then look around you what is happening around you and what can be done about that so this is one of the most important things to understand in these times that we need to stay in this moment right the farther right. the farther ahead we are going to think the far the worse we are going to feel about it. because we can't predict what might happen so so really about um you know trying to avoid getting into that um thought process where you're constantly procrastinating and i mean i think you're fearing for the worst Mm-hmm. um and uh, focusing on the moment um as you mentioned earlier create a plan in- a, a, a great suggestion really t- is to incorporate some uh, breathing exercises something enjoyable some stress busting activities as part of your mm-hmm. daily routine um yes there's another great question that we have um about how how do you mm-hmm. overcome your fear of contracting covid I mean this is this is a reality I mean, it's I'm sure it's a fear that many of us have what advice do you have for for us mm-hmm. uh, I'll just come back to this but adding to the previous uh, uh, question uh, you know uh, it's also very important for us to appreciate our small achievements mm-hmm. like initially I spoke about maintaining a to-do list maintaining a you no know, activity book where we write down all the things that we want to do even out of five activities we are able to do just one mm-hmm. we should give ourselves a pat on the back you know mm-hmm. i did this and i appreciate myself for this these are a few you know uh, self affirming statements that we can actually use which go- which are going to help us feel good about ourselves yeah so that is one of the things that we have to do and we have to acknowledge that we are doing this Mm. rather than waiting for others to tell me what i'm doing right i need to appreciate that i am going through this and i am a strong person and i'm going to get through this right okay. right so uh coming back to this question how do you overcome your fear of contracting covid covid um that's <laughs> that's very difficult in the current times since uh, we are seeing a spike in the cases you know, on a daily basis and not much is happening all over the world so we need to understand the difference between probability and possibility as we had all previously discussed um there would always be a possibility of a person to get some kind of an illness right throughout their life or right in this moment anything could happen mm so possibility would always be there but how probable is it whether mm. you have come in contact with a person who has this illness or not whether you are following these precautions or not whether you are experiencing the government guidelines or not mm. these are all the factors that affect your probability of getting you know this illness so this is very important to evaluate that what is my probability of falling sick 
right if i am staying at home if i am no, not going out if i am not interacting with anyone if i am following all the precautions then the probability of me getting this illness is very low almost right. to zero right right but again and, if we are going, yeah and and also about, about really accepting what you can't control we can't predict the future so mm-hmm. I, i mean i suppose what you mentioned earlier about really living in the present um mm-hmm. it is also becomes very important mm-hmm. yes um so we have a, a couple of questions that i just wanted um, to share with you um uh, one of our listeners is us is saying that the the lockdown is becoming difficult for many people especially children um and my toddler mm-hmm. has become irritable and clingy in the last two months uh what can we do to save our children from the distress of present times okay so this is actually a huge problem with the young mothers that their toddlers are becoming more clingy and they are demanding a lot of attention demanding a lot of time and it becomes very difficult for mothers to deal with that especially if you know they are also working and mm-hmm. they're staying in a nuclear family it gets very difficult to balance your work and your life right in this case if you are staying with your in-laws or even if you're just staying with your husband you have to have to discuss this with your husband um even in the last uh, uh, you know uh, talk we talk about we spoke about relationships so if we are you know in such a situation and if we are getting overwhelmed we are feeling burdened that what should i do about it i feel no i don't know where to go mm. so they can all talk about this to their spouse or their in-laws if they are staying with them to help you out mm. so the vision of chores as at this moment is very important if you are trying to do everything on your own then it would not you know be a good idea you would certainly get tired you would get emotional you would get all these kinds of outbursts and you would not be able to function productively your mm-hmm. work would suffer your personal life would suffer so here what is important is sharing of responsibilities if my child is becoming clingy i need to take help from my family members and also there are a lot of uh, behavioral modification techniques that we use with little children so you know uh, we can reward them for positive behaviors we can reward them for sitting with their grandmother or eating by their hand or you no know, uh, giving mommy some time for herself let's say half an hour and if you're n- not if you won't disturb my mom for uh, half an hour you would get a candy or you would get a hug or something like that mm. so these are the things that can be very relevant for you know uh, young mothers during these times so really sharing uh, acknowledging if you're feeling stressed out by your caregiving uh, responsibilities as a mother sharing that burden um and um also you know when when i think when children become very distressed um it's it's also often that they're trying to express something that we're not able to understand so you know and sometimes i, I think mothers just need that head space to be more available for their children which is difficult with a with a clingy child so taking mm-hmm. that break to really do some self care also makes um, a mother more available to for yes. their child at that time um and mm-hmm. definitely maybe things like play do you do you think those kind of things are also important um following mm-hmm. a routine like you mentioned um to help them understand in a playful way what is happening right now because maybe young toddlers are really not able to understand uh, why everyone is so anxious mm-hmm. or why things have changed right now yeah so teaching children is very important right now even young younger children who are let's say you know two or three years old mm-hmm. telling them through drawings or through pictures or through stories is very important of you know uh, the current situation and why is it necessary to maintain all these rules right now so mm-hmm. <laughs> since i am also in quarantine right now i can share my own experience that okay. uh, i have a little niece and she just runs away whenever i go close to her it you know <laughs> you have to stay away from me because you've come from outside 
and that is how we can do it you know we can make it fun for them mm mm so such important aspects of uh, covid situation fun for little kids is very important because otherwise it's very difficult for them to understand right they would not understand why we are doing this and what is the relevance of this but making it a fun activity would be very important yes absolutely and i think also making them feel that um encouraging them to also express their emotions and how they're feeling mm-hmm. like um you know whether it is fear or um distress about a certain rule that's being imposed um mm-hmm. turning that into some fun activity as you suggested when you're in quarantine yourself um mm-hmm. is a great way to help make the situation seem less stressful yes um yes. we have another question uh, about um you know a lot of people who um go to a therapist without informing families because families have a lot of stigma regarding reaching out to a therapist and how would you encourage people to seek help in such a situation so you know people people may be very reluctant to seek help from a therapist because of stigma mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. What, what, how would you encourage them to do that um see if a person has already been going to a therapist then they can definitely uh, reach out to the same therapist online if it's it's there if the facility is there but again if there is a stigma in the family uh, we might uh, help them understand the situation by arranging a meeting between them and the therapist if you are not able to tell your parents or your family about what mm. you're going through that might also be considered but if one does not want to do that then tele counseling tele medicine is is quite helpful and you just need to find some space for yourself and some time and it works as well as a face to face counseling so there is uh, you know a uh, Uh, similar interest of uh, people uh, you know are all around me that's as if i've seen that a lot of people are opting for tele counseling and that works quite well so if you have the resources if you have the time and if you have the space you can seek an appointment with your therapist and talk out your issues with them so yes. this is a way in which you can mm-hmm. seek help So tele tele counseling support is is really a great way for individuals whose uh, family may not be uh, very accepting of their seeking help to uh, you know for these people to just reach out and um get the kind of support that they need and as you're mentioning they they just need some space and time um and mm. this tele counseling can be done over the phone over video um and yeah. they can mm. um and it's it's literally the same as a face to face session with yes. a therapist. Yes. Okay, yes. that's yeah. And and that's something that we've been providing and and I think we it's mm-hmm. been a very helpful solution for people during um this covid times uh where uh, you know travel and all is heavily compromised. Um yeah. even even you know a, a lot of people just call us out of you know panic mm. what is happening what might happen this and that so just a few minutes of reassuring them is very beneficial so a telephone call or just some mental health professional giving them accurate details of how they are feeling and that it, it's okay that's very helpful yes so even if you talk to your therapist or a counselor on phone that would be a huge help so as as you mentioned like not not everyone may have somebody to turn to for psychological help i mean it's great if you do have someone who can provide you that support but in yes. cases where you don't have someone reaching out to a therapist doesn't mean that you have necessarily a serious psychological issue because there's a lot of stigma um around yes. this uh but just even a couple of uh sessions uh where you can talk about your concerns your feelings and get pre- proper correct information from a professional can go a long mm-hmm. way in um helping an individual feel more psychologically um secure and um improve mental uh, and emotional well-being mm-hmm. yeah so a lot of uh, these sessions are you know not even aimed at helping them uh, solve their problems a lot of them are just aimed at 
helping them understand what is going on and once mm-hmm. a person is able to understand and acknowledge what they are going through and you know what are the emotions they are experiencing because of x y z reasons mm-hmm. then finding solutions become a little bit easier for them yes and they may or may not require a therapist for that right so that is also one of the things that is done in counseling mm-hmm. just help them evaluate the situation right so these sessions could be could they don't need to be too frequent or too long just a few sessions and a person may get a different perspective on life mm mm-hmm. also one need, need not be psychologically ill or psychiatric patient to seek counseling right absolutely and i think we have another comment about um how um there are a lot of horror stories about the kind of emotional disturbance and stress that people are going through um as they're being quarantined and i think um that the advice that you're giving for people who are quarantined at home uh mm. it is is very useful and helpful uh minakshi um mm. we have another question that's that's really important i think for people who are uh you know quarantined at home but how can family support a person who's quarantined mm-hmm. okay so uh since a person is in quarantine they won't get a chance to speak to them directly or face to face one of the ways in which they can stay connected is through phone or through direct social media that is one that is the simplest way of staying in touch mm. then the family members also have the responsibility of uh, providing this person with the relevant information because there is a chance that the person who is quarantined may not be aware of what is going on how are things right now what might right. happen so some kind of an update is required for this mm-hmm. person who is in quarantine um asking them how they are doing like you know uh, as i had talked earlier about accountability buddy so even your family can do that mm-hmm. they can just ask them how they are feeling what they are doing how they are you know, passing their time what is their routine this is again one of the things that the family can do um another thing that yeah um no go ahead i was i was just saying a lot of people um have been experiencing uh you know guilt about you know being under quarantine because it means they can't carry out the kind of activities um you know the that they're usually doing um you know like the cooking and the the managing the the house um mm-hmm. are these things that uh, how would a family manage that um first of all uh, the guilt is unwarranted here because uh, when a person goes into quarantine this is a like we would say uh, you know the, i can't remember the term but it's like you are sacrificing you're making a sacrifice you are giving up your freedom and your space and your routine for others around you mm, mm. so there's nothing to feel guilty about you are in this the you know the whole nation you are on the front lines with everyone here so it's okay if you are in quarantine it's okay if you are not helping them out but mm-hmm. you know keeping your family safe is more important it's yes. okay if the chores are not get done it's okay if the house doesn't get swept every day it's okay if the dishes are dirty that's fine mm-hmm. but how would a person feel if they infect their family yeah. that would be a bigger guilt mm. so rather than thinking about yourself not doing things you can focus on these thoughts that i am protecting my family i am mm. protecting my loved ones and i am brave and this is like a sacrifice for them and once i am out this will all be over right so you need to understand the uh, temporary nature of the situation mm. it would get over and it would be fine it would be you know like this even never happened so these are the kind of things that a person needs to understand when they experience guilt feelings changing mm. their perspective from uh 
you know a person who is causing guilt to a person who is sacrificing is more important and it and that itself great. that itself would motivate you to yes. remain within quarantine as well as act as a motivator for the entire family yes so, yes definitely and um, so in case um, you know we have a couple of minutes um, to go if you do have any questions please share them and uh, and minat should be able to respond uh, to these questions um, so just type this out in the chat and um, we'll uh, hope that we have time for minakshi to address these questions um there's been a lot of uh, you know questions um so we have another comment saying that when we distribute work um make it fun so uh, uh, you know making you know get the whole family involved with um uh, you know managing quarantine and mm-hmm. helping people to get through it together so really, really it's if if you're with your family um during quarantine it's 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 an effort on the entire family's part to help yes that person get through it um but yeah. we've also seen a lot of um you know when when people do go into quarantine um there's also been a lot of naming and shaming amongst um you know the community can you can you just repeat the question so we've also seen that there's also been a lot of naming and shaming um about people as they go into quarantine within a community mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. how how does one deal with that because you know there's it's um, mm-hmm. speaking when they were mentioning that it was like a witch hunt uh you know the whole contact tracing and where you know where you know whom did you meet and where is it you know where did this possibility yes. of tracking the um infection come from um and this itself is quite difficult for people to handle so mm-hmm. what advice do you have for the uh for the people who are doing this witch hunt or uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh see for the community it is important for them to understand that a person is not purposely falling sick there there would be times that despite following all the recommendations all the government guidelines a person might get sick there is a chance because since you know we don't know about what kind of virus we are dealing with so there might be a risk of you know a person getting sick without doing any anything adventurous so we need to just let them be and not you no know, name them and not shame them because they don't want to be sick and they don't want to put others at risk unless a person is uh, of a criminal nature we don't nobody wants to spread this illness right so that's what we need to understand the second thing is that uh, even uh, you know we are uh, becoming more and more suspicious about uh, these uh, delivery boys and people who are delivering the essentials and uh, doctors and people other people who are working in hospitals so again these are the people who are helping us maintain some kind of uh, you know uh, routine maintaining some kind of um, uh, what would you say delivery of supplies if they are not there the nation is going to <laughs> i don't know what is going to happen to our country if these people are not there the sanitation workers the doctors the delivery boys these are very important mm-hmm. and one must keep this in mind that even these people are putting their lives at risk to deliver your essentials to help mm-hmm. you out mm-hmm. if you are going to ostracize them if you are going to you know blame them for spreading the illness then this is going to ultimately affect us mm. we are the ones who are going to suffer so rather than questioning them about you know where they have been whether they are clean or not it's okay they you can do that but you cannot judge them mm. you cannot stigmatize them because they are very important for our survival and they are working really hard in very difficult conditions supporting them right now is very important secondly um yes yes 
so secondly um if if we talk about the person who is quarantine mm. they might also feel that i might be stigmatized things might not be the way they were before i was in quarantine and you know, god knows what might happen so here they need to understand that this is a sacrifice for the greater good yes this is something that is not neg- not negotiable mm. they have to practice this routine they have to undergo quarantine for some time for the greater good i would even say that these people are heroes mm. even mm-hmm. i am a hero i am staying in quarantine, in quarantine. so yes <laughs> Yes, I am a quarantine hero, and that is that is very important for your loved ones and their well-being. So even if these thoughts of guilt and thoughts of stigma come into your mind, think of yourself as a hero. Think of yourself as a person who is on the front lines and who is protecting others from getting sick. Right. So I mean, I think that's great advice for both sides. Um, if if you mm-hmm. are in quarantine and you're feeling guilty about. the fact that you're in quarantine remind yourself that you are a covid hero and you're doing your bit for uh, mm-hmm. your family and the community and the nation and mm-hmm. likewise if you are um if you're a person who's interacting with with people show more empathy so we've got a great suggestion um from one of our listeners that uh, yes. if somebody's coming to deliver something to you offer them a disposable uh, water bottle you know show more empathy this is a this is a battle that we're all fighting together so we need to uh, one of the when we know that there are others who are watching out for us as we are in quarantine um it's going mm-hmm. to do that much more to keep us motivated um whilst we're mm-hmm. in quarantine um, yeah and uh, we have another comment about um there being a lot of peer pressure um in pockets where peers deride um you for being too much of a rule follower and mm-hmm. necessarily being uh, scared of covid and so on and you know <laughs> so just be brave, okay you know and, mm-hmm. and these people need to be told uh you know mm-hmm. that this that's that's not really being a, a covid hero <laughs> so uh, what what comments what 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 um thoughts do you have on that about people who are um, who d- are not really understanding the magnanimity of um, you know the the whole magnitude of this situation hmm uh it looks like uh, the the comment from someone who is maybe an adolescent or maybe they're in their early 20s hmm. in which peer pressure is very very prevalent um hmm okay and uh, here we need to understand that despite whatever people are saying we need to be very clear with what are the guidelines and what is the current update hmm so referring to relevant material like government websites like you know who websites cdc even the ministry of health and welfare their website you need to understand that this is and impo- this is a very uh, uh, what would you say critical situation and rule following is very important right now going out without a mask and without proper precautions is not bravery it is going to be very very harmful for you so if you are following the rules that's great try and help these people understand if possible and if they are not understanding at least you continue following the rules because it does not make you weak it it does not make you um, you know uh, weak so you have to understand that these rules are there because of a reason mm-hmm. nobody is uh, nobody spreads unnecessary rumors or you know tells about these deaths if there is nothing to worry about Mm. there is a pandemic situation going on and we have to follow whatever rules are being provided to us and we have to understand that this is relevant for the current times and you also need to understand that if nobody follows these rules what would the extent of the illness be right just right. think about it so i mean i think that's that's really important thing that you've highlighted uh, i mean actually that 
you know, rules are really important. Um, yes, there may be peer pressure from people to do things that are against, um, you know, the government guidelines or guidelines from other credible sources that are encouraging people to maintain uh, the social distancing, um, as well as, you know, the kind of um, protocols that people are being encouraged to follow whilst they're in quarantine. And mm -hmm. um, if, if you can't convince your peers um, to mm -hmm. follow these rules, as you rightly mentioned, it's, it's so important to, um, to, to ensure that you don't succumb to peer pressure and, mm -hmm. follow, and, and still follow them because these rules are there for a reason. And yes, it's, it's definitely a reality. The, the pandemic mm -hmm. situation is definitely a reality. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I just wanted to, as we, as we close, um, you know, Minakshi, it's been great speaking with you. I think there've been some fantastic tips that you've shared with our listeners about how to really stay motivated during quarantine. Um, it's, it's, yes, it's definitely um, something that may, an individual has to do alone. But I think what I've heard you say is that it requires a lot of support from yes. family members and from the community as well. Um, mm -hmm. I really like this tip that you've given about this accountability buddy, you know, the moment, uh, yeah. so maybe this is something that we all need to really keep in mind um, and share mm -hmm. with others, um, you know, about um, how important it is to identify someone whom you can talk to, share your concerns with, um, mm -hmm. someone who can check in on you, um, check in about your mental health, your well-being, um, whilst mm -hmm. you're in quarantine. Could be a family yeah. member, could be someone else outside. Um, if you can't, if you can't reach out to anyone, definitely reach out to a professional. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you gave some other really fantastic tips about, you know, how some practical tips about things that people mm -hmm. need to do whilst they're in quarantine, maintain a routine, maintain your physical health, uh, well-being, do something that's enjoyable. And I think um, most importantly, give yourself the credit for having, you know, got through that one more day. So I think that's definitely, definitely. all been fantastic um, advice. Um, any, any final thoughts, Minakshi, anything um, that, more that you'd want to share? Um, just one that, uh, as we were talking about the accountability buddy, uh, there would be times when a quarantined person won't be able to identify such a person. Mm. In that case, anyone from the family, anyone from their social circle could take this responsibility that, you know, I'll be there for you. Right. I'll be able, to, I'll be keeping a check on you. I'll be asking about your well-being. So even if they're not asking you for your help, you can always take that responsibility and help them out in dealing with the situation. Mm -hmm. That would really, really help them in the long run. Right. So um, I hear you, Minakshi, that we, I think we all need to also make ourselves available as accountability buddies mm -hmm. for others um, as people go into quarantine. So I think yes. with, with, with those, uh, with that really great piece of um, advice for all of us to follow, um, I'd like mm -hmm. to thank all our listeners for joining us um, on Instagram mm -hmm. and Facebook and um, look forward to um, having you join us again for our future uh, online awareness uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thanks.